Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Simple Ken. We have the lovely Veer Das with us. Hello. Intro music. so much for joining us and uh, this is uh, unfortunately the third time only that I've met Veer. Uh, yeah, so we've met once in a green room, I think once on a flight. Yes, once on and a flight. That doesn't count, that was like a few yeah. seconds. And then I remember like, I think when I produced the Pajama Festival. Oh yes, right? oh yes. yes so yes. I just remember yes, you, yes. Uh, maybe uh, your girlfriend at the time was performing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right? I was that producer guy. Yeah, yeah. and so just like one long haired luscious locks oh, guy was that? like, Going and setting up mics for them or something like that. So I remember that. And yeah. I was like, he should perform, man. I've heard he's a comic. And yeah. they're like, no, he's setting up for them. And yeah. I'm like, okay, fair yeah. enough. Oh, man, yeah, that's what's the true. Uh, I didn't think you would remember that. So, yeah. Yeah, so I have an opening story for my first context of you. Okay. Where uh, there's this college. I'm not going to mention the college because they're already pretty proud of themselves and pretty popular. <laughs> and I don't want them to make it harder for new comics to perform there. They had a stand-up comedy thing. And I performed and I won it. And um, they said the first prize is you get to go to a comedy store and do a spot and Veer Das is hosting. And uh, you were so popular, you, like even like you were just like stand up, a big part of stand up that I even as a kid didn't know stand up existed in India, but I knew who Veer Das was. So I was like, oh, Veer Das is hosting the show. And I fully underestimated the, the value of a spot in comedy store. I said, what's yeah. the big deal? I yeah, went back to Bangalore. And was this the era where we were allowed on weekends or was it the... I have no idea. The Because when the comedy show first started, there was like this, no, in, uh, Indian comics, uh, Wednesday, Thursday. I didn't even know any of this. And then the foreign yeah. comics, remember British comics would come down. Yes, yes. They would get Friday, Saturday, Sunday because we weren't good enough yet. Yeah, this is pre-independence. Pre-independence. <laughs> yeah. And then they discovered, oh, these guys are selling tickets. Yeah. Uh, let's move the, the British comics out. Uh, Maybe it was in that period. Then I came to Bangalore. Uh, and then uh, then I met uh, the Bangalore guys and then they told me that you, s- you missed out on a comedy show spot with Veer Das. And I said, <laughs> I, was, I was 18 or 19 or something. And I was like, yeah. And then it took me another four years to get that spot again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sorry. Also, welcome to the show. Um this is a show where it's uh, not like an interview show. It's like a genuine conversation. So sure. uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, just treat you like a... Uh, subject that has to be I, I have like a b- I, I don't think comics get to brag about formats at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> like when you put two comics in a room it's just like yeah this will be something yeah it's uh it's porridge yeah yeah, let's go. yeah. and uh this is very important to me uh for you to come here because um there's a lot of comics of my friends like who watch this and mm-hmm. whatever you have gone through is like so valuable for us because um we have very few uh, comics that we can study, uh, which is my first question, which was when you started, there's like, I don't want to make our age conscious, but like you're, oh, there's a 10 year age gap between us. And yeah, I'm 43. You're 33? I'm 32. You're 32. There you go. Yeah. And I can't even imagine when I started, I thought that I had come into the genesis of stand up at the beginning, yeah. but you had done years before that. And my my first question is, I'm, sh- I'm sure your only reference was a West comics. So, you know, like, how do you navigate through a career in stand-up? Is there even a career in stand-up? No, man. Like, I'm, do- I'm doing it all in reverse. <laughs> like, that, my whole career is in reverse. What do you I, say that? I'll, I'll explain that. Like, so, I used to see, when I was in college, I used to see, like, okay, Eddie Izzard, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, because uh, DVDs. You yeah. know, I'd buy DVDs. Yeah. And, uh, and I watch them on the net. And then... I wrote a show okay, and it went well. It was like a 90 minute show. Yeah. And I, the first time I did stand up was 90 minutes for 800 people. <laughs> right? How did you get 800 people? It was my college. So it was my thesis oh. performance in drama school. Okay. Right? okay. So and then you go in thinking, oh yeah, uh, I know how to do this now. Yeah. Then you do some open mics in Chicago and get slapped around and you discover I'm not very good. But by then I came back to India. Okay. So when I came back to India, there was no clubs. There's nothing. And right? your immediate thought is I'm going to... 
figure this out here instead of just being like oh it's not gonna happen no I'm I, in India I was like so I got in and somebody's like we're gonna make you a VJ <laughs> and, and I did the VJ thing for about two minutes right okay. and I'm like this next song yeah. uh, and I was like I suck at this yeah. um, and uh, was told that by my soul and other VJs and I was like no I'll, I'll give the comedy thing a go and so I'd, I'd end up having to like book a hall okay. on my own yeah. like the Habitat Center in Delhi or whatever 430 people write 90 minutes of new stand up okay right? this is when you say right you're not going to an open mic you're just sitting at home right. and you're like i think this is a good beginning this is a good middle and yeah. and this will work this will work. okay, okay. <laughs> then i'm putting awesome. then i'm putting uh plants at the foot of the stage so that i can hide cue sheets behind every single plant oh obviously because i can't remember it because yeah. i can't remember because yeah. i've not worked it out right exactly. so My God. then you go on stage for 90 minutes you're like blah 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 and like no dynamics just sheer confidence <laughs> right yeah, no fit. narrative like a drunkard playing darts right you're just going at it and then i kind of coasted on doing that for like a really long time yeah. and then what happened is i wrote this show called history of india yeah right yes i've heard of this now history of india ended up doing I think 250 sold out shows. Wow. Right. So I could and I only did it once a week. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Again, I'm very curious like how are you getting such a big audience? Like by this time you've done the TV gigs, you've done all these done shows. The TV gigs I'm not popular, okay. right? But then um around 2008, 2009 I shot Delhi Belly. Oh, right? this is after Delhi. Yeah. Oh, so okay, then okay. So until then that... I was on CNBC and I was doing like a weekly news comedy show yeah, kind you of thing. Yeah, all like I went online to see what no you've done. I just I lost done everything, track, bro. dude. Like yeah. You and Abhish, like I feel like you're having this joke that Abhish has done every job in Mumbai, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like when I read yours, I felt the same thing that all of this is like, um, because it's such a one-dimensional question to say yeah. the stand-up how to get it because you've done a bajillion things and and they're all helping each other, right? They are, but I mean, dude, I did tele shopping also. Remember, oh. do, I don't know if you remember there was a show called Bid to Win. No, no, but it still goes on. Yeah, yeah. so bit to win is the. Abhi phone kijiye. Ye plasma TV. Is wow. actress ko pechaniye. Wow, bro, it's a fuck ton of money. Yeah, it's a fuck ton of money. Wow. So they find you when you're at your lowest. <laughs> right? So when you've been fired from three other jobs, <laughs> yeah, magically the people from bit to win come through your window it's and the they're like, "Shabal Joker, <laughs> if you see me on Dancing with the Stars, the... it's over." Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they find you. They creep down your chimney and they're like, "Come on, wow. this is a lot of money." So yeah. I remember. uh i'd been fired from some stuff that hadn't worked vj stuff there's a uh, a lady called tarana who was in rj okay and there's a guy i'm so called, sorry if i don't recognize no, all and the uh, this guy called ud who used okay. to be a vj okay. right and three of us went to bit to win thinking this going to be awesome okay. uh and, <laughs> and it was just so much money it was insane hi we'll have to interrupt this section i've been touring for a while actually Uh, so if you want to come, come off. India is going on right now, where I'm doing uh, Bangalore. Uh, actually, both shows are almost sold out. Chennai is sold out, but we have Coimbatore coming up. We have uh, Delhi coming up. Delhi is a giant, nice, juicy venue, City Fort. Um, so India details are all on my website, guys. I keep reiterating: if you want tickets for my shows, go to my website, which is kennysebastian. dot com. And um, I'm also coming to Amer- North America. I'm doing. Uh, we're doing obviously canada as well we're doing new york we're doing chicago we're doing uh, a festival in austin moon tower comedy very uh, prestigious festival um i'm doing a club uh, called punchline comedy so a lot of st- cool stuff is happening in north america again tickets where are they can sebastian.com i paid a lot of money for that domain okay and uh, then i'm also coming to europe uk uh, europe lot of countries are there by the way i didn't know and uk also london uh, our original forefathers uh, performing there and in july we're doing south east asia we're doing hong kong malaysia and all of that australia also we're doing and that uh, small village next door new zealand we're doing it's going to be awesome so please buy tickets we really need it because uh, if you're not supporting the tour you're not supporting india so i mean what is going on show your <laughs> give some money to indians but uh, yeah, i just wanted to let everybody know now back to the podcast i mean long recording of me talking back then to just do it this gig yeah. is like it's easy money yeah we quit in 3 weeks all oh. three of us didn't make it there's a line <laughs> yeah there's a, there's yeah. a line so anyway back to history of india yeah. so history of india lasted like 4 years man oh so for 4 years i wasn't effectively doing stand up at all you're just doing the same show you're touring everywhere you have to be touring a little bit but largely in mumbai and yeah. like friday saturday or like saturday sunday yeah right 
and then it's and then the movies came out and i started kind of concentrating on acting a little bit yeah and then at some point i kind of looked at the crowd of history of india and i was like oh shit uh theater people came and went young people came and went uh hipsters came and went now it's just getting older and older and older and older like i remember oh. a visceral moment at like uh, tata theater or something where everybody who pulled up to my show had a driver and an audi or a oh you know it was like and everybody was above you know 50 and, and why do you think that happened it, it was just i mean the, the guy making also kept increasing the prices and oh, you know okay. uh I think, but you've been doing this for four years, so the word of mouth effect would have been massive. It was massive, but everybody who was my age had already come and gone and okay. seen it once. Okay. And I became the guy who did that show. He's the guy from History of India, like yeah. uh, the guy from Hamilton is the guy who did Hamilton, yeah. right? Uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, and yeah. now has to kind of do some new shit. So then I was like, oh shit! Like I'm thirty something, and my entire crowd is like way too old for me. Okay. I need to get back into stand up stand up. Okay, right? okay. And then No, you didn't consider that as stand up stand up? No. It just it felt like doing theater every weekend. Okay, okay. Right? It was very scripted. It's not like I was writing then going back listening adding tags none of that shit. Okay, okay. Um movies were going well and then I did a movie called Masti Zade which uh is well documented as a critically acclaimed <laughs> success and the phone stopped ringing. Oh, okay. for like the second time in my life in the, the periods when the phone will stop ringing and i went to la to take some meetings and uh, i did 5 minutes at the laugh factory mm. right and i think i followed whitney mm. oh and uh, i was between whitney and dane cook i think he was closing <laughs> out the night right wow, which is man. a weird lineup anyway right on a this is a shit like i love hearing you <laughs> last time you were just talking about the so i get to interrupt you but it just i remember you said there's a process to get into the cellar yeah and i was just like mind blown like we don't know any of this yeah so my point is whitney cummings goes up destroys kills and i went up i did five i was good man yeah like but it was very surface level shit and wouldn't you say you had more stage time or, or not more even equal because you had this very insane amount of touring period that mm-hmm. it's very hard to get stage time in america yeah so wouldn't you say that You They had the same. No, I was no? very theatrical, playing for the last row. Uh, the not crowd to, didn't like that. No, they liked huh. it. But it, it, it's like watching a very large act out at that moment in okay, time, right? Okay. So you coasted on it, but I did well. But I just remember feeling more fulfilled by that than I had by the last five years. Oh okay. yeah. And then I kind of had to relearn, saying, "Oh shit, stand up works in five minute chunks. You have to write five minutes, then you have to work it out, then you have to oh, re-listen, wow. oh, then you have to rewrite." Okay. So now, for the last like seven years. I've been doing stand up stand up. But like you know? we just had this conversation and you just said you did a 20 minute chunk which yeah. I know is like what you have to do because you I do again and that's another question I do a bajillion things and yeah, I, I do. don't know how you tour so much and do movies and produce and you run a company and so it's kind of crazy so I know that for you you can't do the other extreme just come every night to an open mic do 5 minutes here 5 minutes there you have to really like plan your day and yeah. and i'm sh- i'm you're in a different part of your life also where you, it's not like young dude just chilling no no I, yeah i got stuff. shit to do you yeah. got shit to do so yeah. you have to be like i have these two bits and uh, i can't afford to do it six times back to back in a week so i'm just going to go blind in go 20 minutes and hyper analyze it and then maybe do it one more time and then do you go on stage or no i'm a- becoming a little more obsessive about it like to give you context my stand up writing happens at like 6:30 am okay So I wake up. I have dogs. They wake me up early. So I'm up by like six and six thirty a.m. to eight thirty nine. I write okay. and I write usually stand up unless I'm writing a movie or a series, in which case I focus on that. And that'll end up being like five pages a day, six pages a day, but not nothing to flex about. Regurgitation okay. of six pages a day, and then I'll walk around the house and kind of run it in my head a little bit. And then I'll bring it here, and I did it for the first time here last night, right? Um, and this is a bit you wrote a couple of days ago. I wrote it like four days ago, five days ago, and it's a it's about like uh, getting into boxing for a movie and about uh, going to Vishnu Devi when I was eighteen. Okay. okay. So these are the two bits, yeah. right? <laughs> speaking of boxing, <laughs> speaking yeah. of boxing, right? Yeah. And 
it went okay i mean you yeah. know the i went in thinking it would be 11 minutes okay is my point yeah um and then i wrote on stage a little bit okay and we ended up going 20 Every time I've seen you at an open mic, I have not seen you do small bits at all. Like yeah. you've always come with like it's like you have homework. You've come here. Yeah, man. There's a purpose, and you do a long bit. And I was like, it makes sense because I don't think you have the time to come often and fine tune it. So you have to just jump into the deep end, and then then you go back and then you see the yeah. So I I, uh, I don't record it a uh, uh, video, but I record it audio, okay. and then I listen to it, but. I mean my vibe is also at your worst you still need to seem like you prepared a little bit. Yeah. You know like I'm not a fan of going up and be like so uh, what else yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> no uh because the same person in in 5 months from now 6 months from now you're going to ask them to spend a decent amount of money, amount of money to come to a bigger room and and come see you. Yeah. so they will remember the last time that they saw you yeah so even if it means they see you with a bunch of papers running through multiple thoughts that you've thought about yeah that may or may not be good hmm. uh but at least you've done some work as opposed to oh, yeah like, <laughs> what is we doing this shit dude <laughs> you know yeah so and also maybe they paid a fuck ton of money to see you the last time yeah you know so at your worst you still got to seem prepared because i keep wondering like like you congratulations on getting nominated for an emmy and then you're on conan and i was just like man like how do you like what is how do you go about like your life like are you just like ah <laughs> uh, it's uh, acid reflux and anxiety it's just oscillation even i have acid reflux <laughs> <laughs> it's those two things that's it no because it is uh, it's just chamomile tea and deep breathing <laughs> like this is my life no to be like i'm always fascinated because i'm very lucky like i get to watch my peers do stuff uh so i'm always like you know i look at aib tvf you know they were like a big forefront in the youtube scene coming for sure up. man yeah and then i see you and um, we also have the same uh, agent for america you yeah. and kanan and yeah. i he when beyond asked me like hey do you want to do this i'm like has we done it if we done it, i'll do it because <laughs> right. you i've noticed like you do a lot of these opening of the markets and you try a lot of things that uh, don't have any um, you know like history so you're like let yeah. me go and figure out what this is and um and i was like you know somebody is doing the hard work already yeah. like i don't because you go and open a market i don't have to take that risk cuz i'm like oh and i saw you on conan i even it like if i also want to be on conan like, cuz veer is there like i like you But, made I it mean, very possible is it a risk for you to go into a market where shit may not work out no i'm just saying that uh, it takes something to constantly do it cuz you've been doing it for so long i thought you would at this point be like okay i'm done with uh, risk taking no man like, I, last year i went to Boise, Idaho, okay. Eugene, Oregon, and Spokane, Washington. Okay. All right now. Yeah. You and me both know the U.S. tours are usually like New York, LA, yeah. San Francisco. Safe and, bets. Yeah. You know, make your money and, yeah. and go home. Boise, Idaho, nine hundred seater. Oh. Um, two hundred and eighty people in the audience, and they're all obviously white. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like. it's not even like the comedy like an outsider has come to town <laughs> let's yeah. go he will tell us about the world like you know that kind of a yeah. uh, a vibe spoken maybe similar okay um but i'll go and i'll hopefully be undeniable okay and the next time i'll be sold out nice you know that, and that is how it works in the us like in the us at least there's a good culture of uh, a comic does a city every 18 months oh. and In the US, what happens is the crowd that lives in that city largely doesn't leave that city. Oh, fair, so fair. they have a ritual. They're like, "Oh, we'll go and see Bill Burr once every eighteen months, whenever he rolls through Spokane." Understood. Okay, okay. You know. Oh. So I get to go back and and hopefully sell out one day. But if you're not willing to stomach the two hundred and eighty people in the nine hundred seater, yeah, then don't do that shit. Uh, I mean, off the bat, in the moment you said that to me, you you're in front of an audience that. um doesn't know you and is not used to an indian comic and these stories isn't the immediate um, uh reaction is to kind of simplify and be like so i come from india and this is like do, well, do you do you like i wish i could just go here but then i have to kind of start from the basics cuz i'm sure they don't even know what where delhi is or where 
Mumbai I mean, uh, I have a rule which is whether you're in Mumbai or Oslo or Spokane, like I'm taking you to Noida, right? At the end of the day. So, so that's your goal. I right? am going to do me, but yeah. uh, I'm not going to be an asshole about it and expect you to be on the page before you walked in the door. Okay. I will do some work but in don't terms you feel of... But white comics don't do that. Like they just confidently say, you know, uh, in... in, in uh, uh, what's that sorry Harlem if yeah. they say. and they expect you to understand what Harlem is yeah but dude white comics don't get to tell stories with the nuance that I get to tell stories they don't have the breadth of experience that with all due respect that the average Indian life has you know so we really go- do get to take people into some really cool places that they don't get to take us into mm-hmm. you know uh, something that you like who's I talking to uh, Kaniz mm-hmm. you know uh, Kaniz uh, and I we were just talking and Kaniz has such an interesting story right where I think she's South African um, but also Indian and uh, yeah. has a religious mix in her family as well etc yeah. and I think Kaniz is now in, in New York and Mumbai both but uh, for a while she was like do I fit in here and do I fit in there right but she gets to go on stage now and be like yo I'm all these unique pieces and this is my story. Yeah. And nobody else has this story. Yeah. Which is very cool as opposed to a guy just going, so I'm from Boston. Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, ironically, the more you talk globally, it becomes important to just kind of then really tell your story. Do you, do you just look inside and be like, oh, I don't even need to get to like a crazy story. I could just describe how different uh, and... Um, flavorful my life that's enough like do you appreciate your experiences more now that when you realize like you know you get what i'm saying like yeah. if you're a comic from boston you have to be like oh, i got marked in the subway i think that's uh, shocking yeah. story. but if do you like realize that actually as indians we're pretty interesting and our backgrounds are Look, quite, we have great stories man yeah. and, and we have more dynamics within our family than than yeah. i think most people have within their families like we have we we deal with more like divergent viewpoints yeah. by the time we're 20. And we don't leave. <laughs> we, don't, we sit there and listen to it. Yeah. By the time, like, I think we deal with more negative feedback and positive feedback together than most people do by the time we're 40. We deal with it by the time we're 20. Okay. Just because of how we expose we are to family and the pressure that's on us. So yeah, why not, man? But I do think you need a little bit of foreplay. You do need a little bit of, hey, you guys have this. So I'm acknowledging where I am. And we have this. Okay. So you acknowledge where I come from. And now that you're open, let's go to my home. Yeah. You know, but I do think you need the preface. Yeah. It doesn't work if you're like, so I'm from Noida. Yeah. You know, you, you can't do that. That's yeah. not a great opening. My main question was dealing with uh, how lonely this craft is. It's very lonely. Yeah. And uh, I can't imagine because I'm lucky because I have, uh, you know, my generation of comics yeah. who like me, I came from Bangalore. Yeah. And uh, Bangalore is also such a bubble. And um, I come from Bangalore scene when they used to look down on Hindi comics. Oh, really? <laughs> and the tables have turned. <laughs> uh, and I, oh, so it's like, oh, he does Hindi. and Yeah, like, it's not real stand-up. Oh, and wow. Obviously, I didn't agree with it. But I found it because I can't speak most. I can yeah. only speak English, Malayalam and very bad Malayalam and okay Hindi. Um, and then uh, we came to Bombay and when you came to Mumbai, we were like, we didn't take five, ten minutes for granted. Like, we yeah. moved to the city for comedy. Yeah. So we're here for a job and we could see like Mumbai comics who are just like, ah, I don't know, not feeling like it. I'm going to do my spot today. And we're like, oh my God, what are you yeah. doing? Um, so now, uh, touch wood, like things have gone well for me. And uh, sometimes you, you kind of get alienated from a lot of your co- colleagues. and Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even your friends and uh, non-comic yeah. friends. People who you saw every day in the club, you will now see once every three months because you're both touring and, yeah. and good for the two of you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, and so now when I kind of feel lonely... I can call up Kanan or Biswa yeah. and uh, who's that like who's those people for you I have like uh, six or seven people that are my uh, sometimes they're my uh, I fucking hate this shit person or sometimes they're my woke checks you know like uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> hey we're this uh, this <laughs> like, you is this too much like you know yeah. so I have like uh, I'll call up Rohan Joshi a lot okay you know and we'll talk about that uh, Mittal okay. Aditi Mittal's a beast yeah, right yeah. and and Aditi kind of has almost as much international experience, you know, so she kind of knows the road that I'll, uh, that I'll traverse. Um, if it's something very artistic, sometimes I'll call Pal. Oh, you know, yeah. Because Pal's a good mind to just be like, oh, you know, and, and then you go there. And then um, 
I'm a regular at the cellar, so I, I kind of have a good community of people that are as many years in comedy as I am at the cellar as well. So I'll kind of reach out to those guys and, and okay. be like, yo, what is... Because, yeah. you know, like, I, uh, we are like, in Mumbai, the, the scene is pretty, I would say tight. And like, you know, like, yeah. but you are from, I, again, I, I wish I could word it. But you're from a different kind of generation. Of and uh, a different scene altogether. Yeah, like know? when you enter a green room, mm-hmm. people have to like notice. They can't just be like, ah, it's weird. Anyway, they'll stop the conversation. Yeah, they're usually chilled. Like back me up, Balraj. People are usually chilled when I walk in or is there sort no, of... No, no, no. Uh, their spine straighten up. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, because it's, it's, uh, it's someone who's of significant... So, like, do you feel like, fuck, man, can everybody just relax? Yeah, and- because also this is the most democratic profession in the world. Like, yeah. uh, later that, it, especially if if I come into the green room, which I will tonight, I'm coming in knowing that I've got new shit and everybody on the lineup is going to kill harder than I, ha- mm-hmm. than I am. Because a lot of the younger comics are here with their best 10, yeah. you know, with their best 15. So I'm coming in fucking knowing that you guys are going to destroy yeah. and I'm here to struggle. So uh, there's, I'm not coming in with any ego about no, that. No, I'm not so talking about ha- you. Like, so you shouldn't have that either because yeah. you should recognize the dude came in to bomb tonight. Yeah. And to learn from the bomb. I mean, it is hard not to react that way. Like, I didn't even know like about the seller thing. And yeah. when you brought it up, I couldn't believe it that you were a regular the seller and there's this whole process. Like, it's so alien to me to even think that far. Yeah. And uh, then, then you just, all you want to do is like pick your brain more. Yeah. Uh, but then, I'm sure that, um, does that, do you wish like, uh, man, I wish I had more of my buddies from the, that era, miking together. No, no, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'll be honest with you. There's no, I grew up in Africa where I was an Indian kid, right? And then I went to boarding school in India where I was from Africa. And you have an older sister. I have an older okay. sister, yeah. right? And then I went to America where I was the guy from India. Okay. Uh, in American drama school, I was the one Indian actor in American drama school. Okay. Um, then I came back to Bollywood where they're like, he's the guy from American drama school, mm. right? And then I went back to America and worked there now where it's the guy from Indian film industry. Yeah. I'm kind of used to not being part of the bubble. Okay. You know, like my whole life is defined by um, being on the outside never quite fully belonging anywhere and then having to eventually find security in that questioning that a lot a lot of angst because of that questioning that enough and then realizing you get to experience the best of every bubble before the bubble takes the best of you you know so like right now uh i I start a series um in six weeks with like a proper like hindi film industry top five label right to them i'm a comic that's what yeah v- very clearly yeah, i'm a yeah. comic right so so actors will be slightly insecure you know then they will be insecure like, yeah actors with comics because you know comics are sometimes you know vicious or honest or you know etc and actors don't want to be joked about right so <laughs> there's they'll be very nice oh, bro uh, i like your show on youtube etc uh, etc et yeah. and very friendly then I'll, I'll come and do some stand-up here. And they're like, this right. is the actor guy. This is the actor guy, <laughs> right? Then I'll play a music festival with Alien Shetty and they'll be like, what the fuck is this guy doing here? Like all the rockers are like, this guy's a fucking comic. Yeah. Why is he on stage the, at, at 6 p.m.? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you just kind of got to do you. But I think you have to find like people you love in every community. And just kind of... I mean, you have that with Abish. I have that with Abish. Yeah. I have that with Ron. I have that with Aditi. Yeah. I've got... Uh, I have a friend of mine, her name is Zarna Garg in the US and she's like this Desi auntie who's a, uh, a regular at the comedy cell. She's coming, uh, she's the one who does stuff about, jokes about her husband. Yeah. Yeah, right. she's, she's super funny, yeah. There's this craft there. Yeah. Like, so I love an underdog, right? So yeah. Zarna will open up for me okay. uh, when I'm in the States. Yeah. And uh, she'll walk on and people don't realize they're seeing a comedy seller comic, right? So, oh, yeah. so they she's lovely and sweet and kind of unassuming. And uh, my crowd now is the youngest it's ever been. It's really weird. Do you don't but, want that to happen? No, it's it just happened. Okay. Whether I chose it or not, but seventy percent of my audience is between the age of eighteen and twenty five years old. Okay. Right now. Yeah. So Zarna auntie walks on. Yeah. And they're like, oh. Yeah. And then she says, cunt in thirty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> right. And they're like, oh shit, let's cook. You know. Yeah. And then she's 
brutal yeah. she's an assassin and i love that nothing makes me happier than watching that i've seen yeah. her do some crowd work and uh, someone said are you from india she's like yeah this guy's from india and where are you from the like, kerala these kerala guys keep boasting about their 100 percent education shut up with your shit or something <laughs> it is so funny because uh, it's nice to see uh, an indian origin comic make accurate Exactly. Yeah, because most of the American Indian comics are kind of stuck in that, like the most Indians are brought. The, then 1975 the version of India yeah, that their yeah. parents left behind. Yeah. That yeah. every sitcom is about, but set today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm acutely aware because I, I read 45 of those scripts every year. Oh, oh man, that's another world itself of this. Uh, yeah, sorry, so I think just to wrap up that mm. earlier question. So. has that changed as you've gotten older where you're like you know enough of this soloing and me against the world i just want to like now build a click and just kind of because i've noticed that like i feel like back then you were pretty hard to get uh, access to but now like it's nice to see you come chill and you know but dude i think it's just i made stand up a priority again in my life okay and it wasn't okay. you know very honestly and so it was just something i did on the weekends and now it's something that i i just want to get really good at okay you know was it a trigger for that or i think it was uh a couple of different things you know i started i got to the point where i'm like okay let me start really taking risks with how i do stand up i think the pandemic really helped me because i i did this, did this thing called 10 on 10 yeah i saw that you did right. a lot of study in covid so in 10 on 10 it was just like i'd carry a speaker and a mic up a hill okay you know and you'd walk half an hour to see a stand up comedy show in the sunlight and it was fucking great right and then you cannot do normal material mm-hmm. in a setting like that yeah. it's got to be we've all worked hard to be here so i ended up trying to write these five pieces about the world and hopefully i'll do five more they moved the needle more than any netflix special i'd ever done yeah mm-hmm. so it's a really weird thing to have happen right because mm-hmm. as comedians we always told the goal is the one hour special yeah. the this the that and then suddenly you find that this random thing that you did um resonates with everybody in the world mm. and that has affected your ticket sales more than anything else so just like trusting your own gut yeah. a little bit and my gut started to lead me more and more towards stand up and if it was acting projects and if it was direction and producing i was like then i need to infect it with the similar level of madness that i get to oh. risk in stand up okay you know okay so that's now your reference that if i'm not having as much fun or creative uh, experiences as stand up why am i doing this right it has to either surpass it or it's hell yeah or fuck no okay yeah Th- those are my two choices okay so if it's hell yeah then i'm doing it okay and if it's not hell yeah it's fuck no okay uh, but i'm not doing like huh, maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's that's see. gone that's, that's gone. gone that's gone so uh, i have a limited amount of time hell yeah fuck no okay so actually this show we uh, you know so you know uh, uh, you do the agony uncle long ago you did have one show i read where you used to take questions and answer ha huh, yeah so we ha- this show is actually that we okay. take questions from the audience this is nothing to do with us like this is just a very uh, unrelated question like yeah. cuz the audience doesn't know who's going to be the guest yeah. next I'm 22. Uh, this is Anirudh. Hmm. I'm 22. I've never been in a constant friends group. Throughout my schooling, I shifted between groups as I'm a person who can fit in anywhere. But it seemed like no one really wanted me in their group, which made me feel like I don't belong with them. So he's 22. So you, hmm. this is like a big joining college was an eye opener. I learned a lot of things and changes I've been through are massive. I've also been going to therapy since Jan this year, which has significantly helped me grow. My question is, I can't help but look down, judge my friends who choose to live in their own bubble. despite having the resources and knowledge to choose not to be concerned aware about certain issues i feel like there's certain universal things that everyone should be worried about like the environment and climate change i don't know how to not to judge them or still have a conversation with them knowing uh that have a for a lack of a better word conservative and orthodox mindset about a lot of things now uh, the reason i took this question because i think he's 22 uh, the, the kids going through a lot man yeah, yeah going through a lot and i think um, I think this problem I think I mean I, yeah I would say to someone like that he's a drifter basically I don't think he feels like he belongs in any group but I don't think that a sense of belonging is something you can expect to get from other people S- spoken like a true veer <laughs> you know no it's true like yeah. at some point if you if you do the work on yourself 
and if you uh, if you just find a way to be healthy yeah and like kind and like cool yeah you know uh and you do whatever is necessary to bring those the just kindness out of you and authentic and like be completely you wherever you are one day you'll wake up and you feel at peace and like you belong and hopefully you won't be able to psychoanalyze what made it happen that way okay you know you'll just feel at peace and and i also do think like what comedians and like younger kids need to realize is you have to the deepest senses of belonging and love and uh, and truth will come from very private parts of your life that come from people uh that have nothing to do with what you do on stage and nothing to do with you know your peer group in college it'll just come from like random Yeah. people yeah. and you have to kind of chat like i have three people from kind of every phase in my life so i have nine best friends okay right and they get an equal level and uh two of them are from dps noida okay right one of them is from sana right which is when i was 8 years old uh you know uh three of them are from college in the united states and then two of them are from south campus oh. right so uh and then there's two people that i work with but and none of them are in the entertainment kind of thing they're all one, doing their own not one so like i'm good yeah you know what i'm saying uh in terms of if i ever need reality or if i ever need life or if i have ever need just good solid bankable advice i'm good dude nine is a lot so but I'm, yeah. like i'm i'm good at picking people like yeah. this and it was like literally like uh, nikhil is my oldest friend in the world uh we met because we had both got our ass put by a senior in sana <laughs> and we were both sitting at dhobi garden crying like he's going to beat us up tomorrow man <laughs> <laughs> this is our life now <laughs> this is our life now yeah. and he did right oh, so no. that's nikhil uh sahil and i met uh because we are both we were going to fail first year of college oh, no. and we drove to the notice board together oh, no. and i passed and he failed <laughs> what so, is sail do now <laughs> sail is a graphic designer nice. in, in london expected <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. so he's because of that ruksh uh was, was one of my closest friends we met in class 10 and we uh we fr- we became friends because we both shaved that dirty puberty mustache that guys have oh you know said so what th- what grade uh, grade 10 oh right? wow so we both had like a so no, fair here yeah, right yeah <laughs> and and we shaved it and everybody in dps like mardangi kaat di tune oh, right wow. so we both you know that was our experience yeah. so i just have these people and now they and you have to keep in mind fame or uh whether you get married whether you don't get etc etc fame being popular in the entertainment industry cushions you from adulthood okay. it really does yeah. like if you look at your average friends who are not in entertainment they have done far more adulting by yeah. the time they are your age than you have so it's good to have them in your life that's so true uh, you know they also seem more beaten up by life i feel like they do yeah but like uh, at some point they like you're not living life you're really protected from a lot of shit that most people have really yeah, with dude, yeah dude like uh, at some point i had some like uh, some investment thing right and i just kind of sat back i'm like fucking everybody that i'm calling like yeah uh, no is younger than i am oh. <laughs> like and i'm like you know they're like 3 years younger than i am i'm like why don't i know this shit like yeah. i should know yeah. uh how this fixed deposit is going to blah 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 but i just don't um so your friends come in handy there as well but yeah they've been beaten up by the fixed deposit and you can see the fixed deposit on their face is it, the i you brought up marriage which is also something i wanted to ask you like i recently got married as well and um i was like doesn't this this schedule you have like um I was speaking to I think Siddharth yesterday and yeah. he was telling me that you do 8 months abroad and the rest here. No, I mean last year was 8 months abroad and the rest here because it was a touring year. I was just like I got to rebuild the moment, the momentum I had um before the pandemic and also I had some like fucking dark shit go down in my life with the controversy and I was like I'm not dead yet and I'm going to Yeah. you know, I'm going to touch base with everybody who wants to see me. Yeah, so, I saw this special. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, so it, yeah. it was that, but normally it'll be like uh, 
like this year's an acting year so i'll act for maybe 6 7 months and i'll write during those 6 7 months and hopefully at the end of that i'll have like an hour that i'll talk so this i'm just asking from my uh, side like oh, how do you manage the marriage like it's great dude like so i mean my wife was an event manager so she kind of gets it okay right but uh, she picks the good cities in the world okay you know and she'll come there <laughs> nice. you know so shivani's like i'm coming to edinburgh yeah. i'm coming to london i'm coming to cape town got it you go to arlington texas into boise <laughs> i do do your comedy thing you do your comedy thing but yeah. like dude i did the fringe festival yeah it's a month in scotland you work 1 hour a day in the evening yeah. my show was a 6 p- no a 5 15 p.m. show. Okay. So I was done by 6 15 p.m. You go out to dinner after that. Nice. You got the whole day together in Scotland. You know we don't have kids. Okay. Uh, life's all right, man. That's awesome. You know. Yeah, I know it's getting really hard for me because uh, we just got married and like we want to spend time, but uh, and we didn't date for too long before we yeah. got married. So it's uh, and she has a nine to five job. She's a dentist, so uh, our schedules are opposite of each other. But well, then are you able to? Because this is a profession where. you got to come to the habitat and work it out until midnight or whatever if you've got new shit so are you able to do that i uh, no i kind of understand your schedule now because now i kind of come in and i tell brother i have a family dinner i got to go by <laughs> so i come to my spot and i run yeah but that's that women do not like that right at the end of the day if you're leaving the house at 9:30 pm yeah which means at some level they're going to bed alone you yeah. know what i mean and to be fair i want to be there they're sleepy the and groggy by the time you get back yeah they've, you're they've getting watched, the worst version of them. yeah, yeah. They, they've watched the movie alone yeah. or you know that's that's not fun but that's par for the course yeah so yeah this is asking like it must but i think because shivani has a background in this and is she still doing the manager stuff or? she does uh, right now she's uh, fundraising with the charity she started a fund okay. called give goa dogs okay so she's kind of raising money for every goa ngo that helps with street dogs okay so it is like the hardest i've ever seen any human being work okay but it's a lot man but obviously she travels far less than you do yeah No, how long? No, you guys have just gotten married when I saw you on the flight, no? Yeah, uh, we got married in Jan. We just finished a year. Okay. And what was uh, honeymoon? We uh, did honeymoon six months after because then things opened up. We went to uh, Switzerland, Paris. Uh, we did solid. Yeah, proper. Because everybody likes Switzerland over here. I was like, "Hamay jana hai." We Fuck like that, it. dude. Yeah. Meru ko bhi jana hai. Switzerland, yeah. and Paris. You went for honeymoon. Yes. Solid options, dude. Like it was uh, because uh, I I also kind of similar to you worked from a very young age so yeah. uh, Trace is kind of uh, as usual taught me how to be human being yeah so uh, I actually realized till I went for that honeymoon trip I've never gone to Europe unless it was for work yeah so this is the first time I'm in Europe and uh, uh, I'm planning the hotels and we are planning where to go and so uh, it was honestly. Uh, That's why when I asked you the question of how do you manage time, uh, I've been a solo guy myself, Navy kid, yeah. traveled a lot. Uh, yeah, because you you also seem like the what I perceive about you is you're a very DIY guy. Yes. Like yes. since I've I've seen you, you're doing your own graphic design, your own tech stuff, your own music. Like you yeah. also, I think you also travel between scenes. Yeah. Uh, a little bit, you know, like uh, if I talk to uh, like. comics i'd say like you and abish uh like there are comic comics do you know what i mean yeah. and uh, then there are comics <laughs> do you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. and i think you and abish are comics yeah. who do a bunch of different things as well yeah. and then there are comic comics yes. you know who are uh, i don't know who they would live be. and die for the craft live and die for the craft yeah. but like uh, maybe Karunesh yeah. is a comics comic, yeah. right? In that sense, Biswa is a comic comic. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. I haven't seen a terrible amount of, uh, yeah. of Biswa's work, right? But like you and Abhishek are comics, yeah. You know who do a bunch of different things, yeah. And uh, those guys typically don't do well on vacation at all. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> shit. Yeah. Because yeah. like you know, comic comics are like okay, I want to write about this shit, blah 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 blah. But you guys are like, what's happening with the camera? Is the edit ready? Like <laughs> you know, shit. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> and uh, it took Goa when um, I got the pandemic happened. I went to Goa like you as well, and uh, it was such a healthy mental thing for me. Yeah, man. Because I was my hands were tied. Like work is not happening. You can't travel. You can't do anything. You can't. Your equipment is locked away in Mumbai. 
you can't do anything so then uh, i started playing basketball with the kids in the society and i was nice. like this is what joy is <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not you don't have to wait for a laugh from the audience you know i uh, surfed i surfed a lot oh, during sweet. the pandemic and uh, then at some point uh, i did a special but th- that happened like purely for fundraising okay like it's a big comic company like, oh Huh, you did a special during the lockdown you fucking asshole and i'm like bro i did it to raise money yeah you know uh, so that became like a driving force the, uh, you brought up that special the my first reaction was how the hell did you sell this and that i didn't sell it as in i didn't sell it like to so netflix the, i didn't sell it to netflix like so uh, the lockdown special yeah basically um I have a deal with Netflix, right? Where my stand-up goes to Netflix, okay. and uh, I think you have the same deal where yeah. they give you a special and they want the option on the next thing, yeah. You do. And they'll either say yes or they'll say no, yeah. right? So I did this special, and uh, I knew it wasn't a stand-up special, right? Uh, and it was crowd work, and it was just kind of this this weird thing that yeah. artistically sort of happened. And I called Netflix, and I'm like, "Yo, I'm gonna put this on my website, and we're gonna raise money for charity." and i'm showing it to you because you first you, writer you know yeah. you watch things that i do yeah and uh, i think even they were like yeah can we help okay you know and uh, so they were really cool about it but they they pointed people to my website oh so outside in came out on my website for 10 days oh uh, it was uh, a minimum of a certain amount per per view i think it was a minimum of 30 rupees a view and you got to pick four charities okay for covid relief okay so you watched my special oh sorry i thought it came out on netflix no so you watched my special for covid relief huh. right netflix was super cool saying go to veer's website and watch his thing etc okay so they their social media helped me out it was on my website for like 7 days or 8 days we made about 47 lakhs for oh, charity wow. okay right gave it all away huh. and then netflix was like called me uh, and i was done with it and then netflix called me like 3 months later and they're like bro uh we heard you got a good response <laughs> and i was like yeah i did and they're like is it still around and i'm like yeah it is yeah. and they're like uh, will you send the drives to us or whatever and i'm like i can email it to you from my phone <laughs> like that's how low res wow. this special is cuz it was shot on like a canon m50 okay in like uh, whatever hd not even on 4k and i yeah. edited it on my laptop okay. so i'm like literally i can send it to you like this <laughs> here's okay. my special and they just put it up as like a catalog thing wow because the reason is how you sell it is because when we shot my special they have such a strict like you know yeah, yeah. technical rule book uh and i was just like wait a minute what happened to that technical rule book <laughs> we made a selfie video yeah. what the <laughs> hell they were saying so much money um so yeah specials cost a fuck ton of oh money oh my dude. god this is heartbreaking how much money it costs they, they're becoming more open so so yeah i didn't sell that to netflix at all okay, it was purely okay. a charity special oh. and like thank you to them for being cool as fuck that's awesome you yeah. know about trying to raise money uh in that moment so my question is like you know how you said the comics comic and comic i feel like you are one of those again the reason i like how you navigate through it is that you're very involved in the business side you're not someone who says i'm not going to have this conversation i'm the artist yeah i'm just you fully understand certain things have to be sold certain things have to be packaged a certain way there's a way of timing you know yeah. let's time projects together uh this project will drive i i don't know if i'm assuming this but you're giving me way too much credit than than is due i would yeah. assume that if you had a movie coming out you would obviously put a i don't need to time any of that shit really? like that's the truth like oh. uh and nine times out of 10 these grand plans that you have they don't uh, they don't fucking work at all okay. like i remember a phase in my life where i was like uh, all right I've, i'm going to sign this sex comedy mm. and i'm going to sign this critically acclaimed hopefully indie film about uh, the 1984 uh, riots and genocide yeah. i'm going to do this fun kind of stoner comedy right and i'm going to do this one other thing that is like a smaller role in a big bollywood blockbuster okay and i'm going to time it so that i do the small role in the big bollywood blockbuster right and then hopefully the sex comedy comes out right after that it'll get lots of big budget stuff yeah. which will drive people to the stoner comedy yeah right and then at the end of it 
I'm a hit him with a critical acclaim. <laughs> nice. I can <laughs> do this also. <laughs> this is my plan. Yeah. Right. First came out the critically acclaimed movie, <laughs> right? Oh. That nobody saw because okay. it was very low budget. Okay. Right. Then came uh, the big Bollywood movie. So people were like, not only did he do a small fucking movie, now his career is going downwards because he's doing smaller roles. Oh. Right. Then came the nice stoner movie. They did really, really fucking well. Yeah. And people were like, this guy's cool as fuck. And then came the sex comedy and they were like, he just ruined everything. Oh my Why God. Why did he do this? Okay. So none of this shit can be planned at all. Even the special releases, dude. Like, yeah. uh, I think I shot uh, Veerdas for India and sat on it for three and a half, four, five months. Oh. Because Netflix had a big rotation of comics. Okay. That uh, this thing. And then with Veerdas landing... Um, I shot it in October and they were like, we need it in six weeks. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like I, I directed this thing. Like mm -hmm. I need 10 days to not look at myself before I can even edit this. Because I don't know if yeah. you have that. I can, yeah, same. I hate watching myself and I hate hearing myself. I'm an editor myself. So it's right? a, it's a gift to, uh, I think it's a gift to hate yourself because it makes you a good editor. You're like, I think so too. None of this should go on. But if I have to put five minutes. Yeah. So like yeah. when I was editing Vidas Landing, I was like, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look. Then yeah. I looked and I was like, okay, my hair looks fabulous. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so you find like see one, some vanity to distract you. Yeah. But you can't plan any of this shit, man. Okay. Like, so a lot of times. But you, you are involved in the. I'm involved in the business side. Yeah. Of things. So like I like taking creative control. I, I do. Uh, and I like the idea of, of walking into a meeting and, and, and having vision that people don't understand and then building a journey with those people and they eventually understand that vision. Like uh, Netflix, great example. Veerdas for India. You know, comics are like uh, fancier suit, bigger stadium, strobe lights, let's walk out, blah, blah, blah. We'd done one of those and I, and I went in and they were like, what do you want to do with Veerdas of India? And I, and I, I drew a slice of pizza. Hmm. <laughs> right? And I was like, there's a door here and there are five slices and one slice is gone and that's the foreigners. And the main pizza is an Indian pizza. Okay. And they were like, so there's no set? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no. Uh, and they're like, but there's no lights and no stage. And I was like, no. Okay. And but you like, kind of, you got, uh, you satiated, you did that version once and now you wanted to do, do something different. I wanted to do something else, right? Yeah. Because I don't like the idea of uh, every time you watch a comic special, it's fancier suit, bigger room. Got it. So I'm proud of the fact that if you thematically put all my specials up against each other, there's nothing similar okay. in all of them. Yeah. So then they're like, how are you going to move? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to move. I'm just going to sit down on doorsteps. And they were like, Okay. Hmm. Uh, so you were like, it has to be different. I don't care. It has to be if different. If it brings it, if it affects, maybe it brings the grandness down, but it has to be, that's the most important thing. Yeah. But then you have to shepherd that process because you have to also have to keep in mind, the more you, more you keep doing this, the people that you build relationships with will leave, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So by that time, I was in a place with the platform where they were like, I guess you'll figure it out, hmm. you know, and we trust you. But then like when Veerdas Landing came around, uh, again, they, I'm like, so half the stage is sand hmm. and half the stage is black. And again, they were like, so there's no set. And I'm like, no. Yeah. no. And they're like, this, what will you do? And I'm like, this is how we're going to shoot it, etc. But it was a newer team. Yeah. So now we had to again, but I do like that journey of just saying, this is my, this is what I want to do. Okay. Like get on the train. So this is my last question, okay. which is, also something I wonder how you deal with. Like, uh, I'm very um, scared of and stay away from the press or any sort of yeah. national conversation. Yeah. And I feel like uh, because it's so hard for me to deal with the constant feedback you get online anyway. Because yeah. uh, a big part of my stand-up career was YouTube. Like, uh, I'm, I started creating yeah. content and then I did theater and then I did stand-up. So I, my first love is always picking up a camera and shooting and yeah. editing. So YouTube is a is uh, back in the day you had people who kind of were more humane. Yeah, they used to write comments saying that hey, I see what you're trying to do, we didn't like it. Now it's just like you suck, you should die. Like such a draining process to like uh, because you need to be uh, confident enough to power through your own insecurities, and it doesn't help when 
your own fans are like being little harsh or the general audience so but on top of that you have dealt with so much i think um, like a lot of talk in general like how do you cut but, that out man like it's but, uh, and just I, go forward i i don't and, and and i will make no claims to having my shit together in all of this it is uh, a deep dark dive to the bottom of the sea yeah. uh, very often and then trying to come back up right yeah. um i all i can tell people is um abandon your sense of community okay for a second all right uh, a lot of people get lost in the my fans want this from me my fans want that from me but if you just open that up a little bit and be like everybody's my fan okay you know what i mean no everybody could be a fan mm. immediately your mental paradigm shifts mm. so you're no longer catering to an algorithm or you're no longer catering to a comment section or letting them affect you know if it if you can go from my fans to everybody is welcome at the table mm. you know um and and i think that comes with getting a slightly broader audience where mm. suddenly when a lot of people watch you not all of them are cool and not all of them are stand up comedy watchers yeah. and not all of them uh sometimes know that they've got to put their phones away at a comedy club yeah and that's okay you know but but welcome uh it's good to see you in that then you can never predict when you create a conversation okay don't even try <laughs> like don't try and orchestrate it mm. don't try and manufacture it um i've done many youtube videos mm. uh that are not stand up and that are you know things or pieces of this and that da da very similarly i still have no idea why a certain piece of youtube gets 35 million views it just happened to connect at the right time and piss off at the right time mm. you know don't you like when you like for example just being here mm-hmm. do you have like a mental thing like a man if i say this it's this going to create some unnecessary no. drama i i i think you will ne- and especially in today's atmosphere who the fuck knows when you're going to be a national conversation right mm-hmm. you have to assume the minute you become an artist of a certain note you have to assume ki tumhara 6 din ka news cycle aayega huh. then you join the back of the line right and you hope there's enough people in line in front of you so you can fully detach yourself at this point at your- this point in time you can huh. uh assume that that's the case which is not to negate the emotional impact that it has on you or your family mm. or your psyche which is very very deep i'm not going to lie yeah what gets me through that is only in retrospect i tell you yeah. uh it's not uh something i practiced when i was present but like i remember when i was on the news and it was terrifying I looked to two people like I just saw two things and they suddenly made sense to me. Mm. I saw Chris Rock mm. at the Oscars nice. and he made a statement and he was like if you want to hear me talk about it come see my new show. Yeah. Is that like, great? Mm. And then I saw another person in the film industry at a very large level going through something very large, right? And I just kind of saw the grace and the tact with which these two people had dealt with it. Yeah. So I have not been on a news channel in 5 years. Oh, I've never gone to a news debate and I don't do news interviews uh around anything controversial or anything like that. Mm. Come to come see my special. So when I was going through something I'm like okay what's my job? I abandon all senses of fairness or unfairness. Who the fuck cares mm. whether something is fair or unfair? Um is it funny? Mm. And the first joke that I write can it make you laugh whether you were mad at me or whether you you support me mm. so then it just became about like a really micro focus can i write one solid joke so all that, that all that bundle of emotion you just de- devoted to i'm just going to express this in my stand up in my stand up don't worry or fret about it you just have an outlet just could it that but who else has that outlet yeah. like you know do think about our profession man like it, it, i i was telling akash this on the on the journey here if an actor or a singer or something like that ever gets into trouble or ever makes a wrong move and they stumble in an artist is imperfect and deserve the freedom to be imperfect yeah. and, and to stumble they got to wait like 5 months for somebody else to give them another movie before they get to talk about it 
you that evening correct correct yeah get to touch base with your audience there are no middlemen yeah like and the audience like man i just came for some jokes man this guy's pouring his heart out but, but, but again i yeah. do believe that there's a way to yeah. do that I understand, while yeah. putting them first correct correct you know yeah. like you come to my show you're going home flying on a cloud yeah. like you're going to be joyful when i send you out the door but maybe i can do that by making myself seem like such an idiot mm. that you feel better about your life Hmm. If it's ever like I'm amazing and this is unfair, you'd be like the yeah. fuck this guy. But if if you go in and it's like I have no clue what I'm doing, I don't know what the fuck this shit is, and it's scary. And then I acted like even further of an idiot and further of an idiot and further of an idiot. They'd be like, all right, I feel pretty good about my life. Okay, you know. So for anyone who's going through that, you get a lot of like pretentious advice. Like don't read the comment. Fuck that. Everybody reads the comments. Hmm. Uh, don't read the reviews. everybody reads the review no they i mean when you said those that four movies plan yeah like you said you you kind of just made statements like oh this guy was cool now he, like it's coming from the public opinion like so you have an idea but of what that, the conversation is that that was a phase in which i was thinking about that stuff you know what i mean so uh, do you still believe that was a conversation no then? i i believe that now you just kind of got to do you and and hopefully people will smell authenticity which will set you apart from like a world of inauthentic content okay. you know because i do think that's what audiences value right yeah now, is authenticity right we, we were talking about vibe yeah that uh, i don't know what vibe is but like you just got to do you yeah. but, but please tell me yeah that um, i was talking to prashant say about this two days ago where uh, we were like you know a comic could come on stage and either their thing is that they want to appear smart or intellectual or they want to appear aloof or they want to appear like dark but uh, i think as human beings we all can read vibe yeah. and immediately like you are not this smart <laughs> or <laughs> you are not this dark or uh, you're complaining about how hard your life is but i think you have a good life and you're just trying to and and i think that's something we underestimate that some comedians think they can trick the audience into a perception but the audience is like i don't know They're why you're saying something this. but i'm not feeling it and the vibe is gone but i i don't think there's uh, i don't know whether it's a vibe or not but i think there's immense value into going into something just being like i have no clue what i'm yeah. doing yeah. like that the, uh, being full, vulnerable yeah. the, not even vulnerable like uh, full disclosure there's nothing like full disclosure for an audience yeah and uh, maybe you are dark in a phase in your life and maybe you are whatever in a phase in your life but if you're like completely honest about that shit yeah i do think there's power in that True. and and by the way comedians are entitled to go through their this is my bill hicks phase and this yeah. is my fair you know whatever because also keep in mind the oldest of us in india are still bachchas dude yeah. like i'm 16 years in to stand up yeah. which really if it like doesn't warrant a conversation about a road map at all until like 25 years you know what i'm saying i was watching a podcast today with theo won and ck and yeah. he was like uh, theo how you how long have you been doing this is like 18 years it's like man you know that 22 year period yeah, exactly that's right. when you really get it's like 22 yeah. years yeah but like ck is like 39 years in or 38 years yeah, in right yeah. like But those guys also started so fucking young, man. Yeah, so it's like Chappelle started at seventeen or eighteen, which is man. And apparently he was great then only. I bet he was great yeah, then. Yeah. But I think yeah. that's one of my big regrets. I'm like, what I would not have given to a have started earlier and b not have had this distraction of eight years. Like yeah. in my mind, I kind of began stand up seven and a half, eight years ago. Mm. Like I, I really, that's the first time I really took it seriously. Fair. You know, so. I think we have uh, covered a lot of things yeah. and we can keep going on and on but I feel like uh, thanks to the algorithm uh, I tried to keep it <laughs> under an hour. Oh is that what the perfect duration is like for the algorithm? I, as you said I I try to be not hypocritical about my content. I'm like would I watch <laughs> anything for more than an hour and my limit is 1 hour. Huh. So I edit like that. So so this is going to be a nice one hour conversation with Veer Das and thank you so much for thank you for having me man opening up and being so honest and sharing your um, I still feel like I have seven other questions I didn't ask but uh, really glad you could make it here and uh, sorry we only took one question today 
because I was too excited. But next episode, please ask more more questions and in the comments. And yeah, we also have an audio version. It's on it's on all platforms, so you, you can just hear the audio version of this. And thank you so much, uh, Tata. Bye bye. Simple.